just about ready to go. Late evening tip inside Cameron, but don't tell the crazies. They have showed up in full force as we are underway, and Colorado wins the tip, and it's controlled by their point guard, Jalen Sherrod. Colorado went on a three-point shooting frenzy in the first game. They made 13 threes, a season high against Middle Tennessee. Here's Von Ley in the paint up and in with the right hand. Aaronette Von Ley, a huge leader for this team. Let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Starting five for Duke has essentially been the same the entire season. Led by a lot of transfers. And then, of course, Agent Zero. Celeste Taylor leading this team in scoring. Here's Shy Day Wilson, and she travels at the top. Sam, we saw Colorado running through Duke's actions in their shoot around today. They just blew up that dribble handoff on the left wing. They're trying to not let Duke get comfortable offensively. Inside Von Lay couldn't convert and out of bounds. It's going to stay here with Colorado. So you already see early on, mm -hmm. Colorado's trying to get it down low to Von Lay. They're going to her early and often. She's a different kind of body down there, a different kind of athlete, has great touch. The Pac-12's co-most improved player already showing that today. And my other big question, Sam, you and I talked about this in shoot-arounds. Who guards Quay Miller? Elizabeth Balagoon is guarding her right now. Colorado starts two true bigs. Duke starts four guards, so can Balagoon Guard Quay Miller inside. That three is off the mark. And Colorado out to an early 4-0 lead. Made two of their first three attempts from the field. Down low, Von Ley. Four points for Aronette Von Ley, the sophomore transfer from Arizona. Colorado knows what they want offensively, and they are looking for it, hitting Von Ley with crisp, quick passes inside. Richardson for three, off the mark, out of bounds, and it's going Colorado's way. And here's what I mean, that quick reversal. Kennedy Brown rotates to try to front Von Ley, but she doesn't have Von Ley deep enough, so Von Ley has enough room still to call for that ball and a really good lob pass over the top. Colorado worked a lot on their defense in their shoot-around this morning. Duke pretty much only worked on their defense <laughs> this morning. Here's Freya Foreman for three. No good, she made five of those in the first round. Three on two, Day Wilson pulls up from the free throw line and hits. Shy Day Wilson had seven assists in that first round game against Iona. She was huge in getting the offense going. And Duke finally makes a basket here so they can set up their pressure. They are known for their full court pressure. This was also something Colorado worked on a ton over the past couple of days. Sometimes Duke will just pressure and then fall back, like they did right there, or they'll trap the corner. You really don't know what they're gonna do. They keep you on your toes. Colorado making back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances for the first time since 2003 and 2004. And I believe we got a whistle on Celeste Taylor of Duke. That's just her first. And that was even away from the dribble handoff action. I think they just called her for having two hands on Sherrod outside of the wing. That was a, an interesting, quick call. And, of course, Duke cannot afford to let Celeste Taylor get in foul trouble. 6-2 to two, Colorado with the lead early on. Strong take from Quay Miller. She's going to line for two. This was the biggest question. How are they gonna guard Quay Miller with a four guard lineup Colorado with two traditional bigs? And Quay Miller has some good versatility. She has some great size, but she can shoot the three. She can put the ball on the deck and she just overpowered Balagoon to the rim right there. See the numbers for Quay Miller in the first round game over Middle Tennessee had five points, eight boards was really limited in the Pac-12 semifinal game against Washington State, the game that Colorado lost. Of course, the Buffaloes an at-large bid in this year's NCAA tournament, but Quay Miller still the leading scorer on this team. 25 games with 10 or more points this year. And converts four points for Quay Miller. And it's gonna help Quay Miller as Aaronette Von Ley continues to emerge because you have that other scoring threat inside, and those two complement each other really well. 
So Duke trying to get their offense going here, just two points. Those were by a jump shot from Shy Day Wilson. Richardson on the drive, can't convert. And Quay Miller with the rebound. Duke brought in a more traditional post player in Corisdale now to guard Quay Miller. So they started four guards, but now they have two posts on the floor with Corisdale and Kennedy Brown. Shot clock at 10. Freda Foreman behind the back. Gets to the elbow. Leaves it short, but an offensive rebound for Miller. Looking to get it out to the point guard. Here is Sherrod. Miller will try from the wing. Yes! Quay Miller shoots at 33% on the year. That's her 36 made three. And she's got an early seven points. Sam, Colorado's players reiterated to us yesterday in their press conferences that they feel like Cameron Indoor is a shooter's gem. They are loving it here. They are feeling at home. And they continue to shoot the ball well from three. Hit 13 threes two days ago against Middle Tennessee in this gym and Quay Meller gets them going so far tonight. And Duke being called for some uncharacteristic yeah. fouls here, turnovers, the Blue Devils really struggling. Every time Duke makes a mistake, Colorado has made the Blue Devils pay. Some early uh, fouls called on some key players. Celeste Taylor with one, as she tries to go for the intercept there. That could have been her ground. second. She's gotta be careful, that could have been her second. Also, Balagoon with one and Day Wilson with one. So you're looking at the three leading scorers for Duke all with one foul here early on in the first quarter. Tiana Jones splits a couple of defenders. To be a Sadler here. Miller thought about it, now drives. And Miller up with the right and finishes. Quay Miller leading all scorers with nine points. Duke is really struggling to figure out how to guard Quay Miller and who to guard her with. Balagoon was too small. And Corsdale's been too slow so far. It's a 13 to 2 Colorado lead and another offensive foul. And the Duke fans can't believe it. That's Duke, Duke runs a lot of dribble handoffs, Sam, in their action. So you've got to be careful. There's a fine line between a dribble handoff and a screen. And I, I actually agree with the official there. I think Kennedy Brown. She passed it more than handed it off, but then she stepped right into that screen and was not set as the Colorado player was coming. So Duke's got to be very careful in that situation. Just hand it off and don't set the screen. Sherrod with a full head of steam somehow gets it to go. Everything's falling for Colorado once again inside Cameron Indoor. They are six for nine from the floor in the first five minutes of the game. Vanessa De Jesus for three. That's no good. And a steal from Richardson. That's the Duke defense that we know. That was much needed from Duke. Getting an easy layup with their defense. And now, again, because they finally have a make, they can get back in their press. This is what they want to do, apply that pressure. The crazies are starting to make some noise, Sam. But Colorado has come out to a hot start, 15 to four. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Well, Colorado came out like they had Sweet 16 on their minds. 15 to four lead over the three seed Duke with 4.53 left to go in the first quarter. Quay Miller, KG, had five points in the first round game. She's already got nine points here in the first quarter. Just an electric start, and they started off trying to guard her with Elizabeth Balagoon, who is a guard. That did not work. Then they started trying to guard her with Corisdale, and she went right past Corisdale a few times for some easy buckets. She has taken such advantage of her matchup so far. It's exactly what you want if you're Colorado. You find the matchup you think you can exploit, and you go at it. On the other side, Duke has had a couple of offensive fouls on some screens. Here's Reagan Richardson taking it hard. No good. The follow from Corstell lost it. Picked up by Kendall Weta. Duke's also missed a few layups inside that they really need at this point. With an 11-point deficit. Here is Quay Miller. Nine points to lead all scores. Aaronet Von Ley, 10 on the shot clock. Sadler coming off a screen. Up at the right, no good. 
Celeste Taylor fouled, crashing the boards. First foul on Aaronette Von Ley for Colorado as Frida Foreman checks back into the game. And that's the first foul called on Colorado, period. Yep. Of the game. And they've done a great job defensively. But as you said, Duke was with some fouls that just hurt you. Some of those moving screen things, you can't have that. Not only do you get in foul trouble, but you give up the possession. All right, Kelly, so just four points here in the first quarter for Duke. How do they get their offense going? I think you got to start with Celeste Taylor, try to get her some good looks. The thing with Duke is they don't run a lot of isolation stuff. They run a bunch of motion, but I still would try to get the ball in Celeste Taylor's hands. Pops one in there. Mia Heidi. That's a great pass by Celeste Taylor. Not forcing it, making the right play. Still the fact that she had the ball in her hands to make that play. Though. Still a nine-point lead for Colorado here. Weta calling for a screen. Goes the other way. Miller drives baseline, double team, and overshoots it. Taylor with the rebound, looking to push. Much better defense by Duke on Miller. Corisdale closed out, forced off the three-point line, and her help side was there. DeJesus knocks down the triple. I talked about Celeste Taylor having to make a few threes in the open. I think Duke in general is going to have to make five or six threes in this game because of how Colorado can score. So that's a good sign for Duke that De Jesus is feeling it. Colorado has a couple of guards that can just dribble and break a press themselves. They're a tough team to press, and that's what Duke wants to do. But Jalen Sherrod, Kendall Weta, they've got ball handlers on the floor at all times. Weta and Sherrod playing together, those are two point guards, plus Sadler and Foreman. Foreman takes it right back after Richardson had a steal. And a whistle off the ball. It may have a uh, shot clock issue here that the officials will be discussing here. Sam, this is what you were alluding to. This is Sadler just breaking the press by herself. Sadler comes off the bench. They have four guards that they feel really good about at all times that can break a press almost by themselves. Sherrod, Sadler, Weta, and Foreman. So as much as Duke loves to press, this is a tough team to press. And I think Colorado feels comfortable when under pressure. An experienced Colorado team. We mentioned they were in the NCAA tournament last year. Miller fading away on the ACC logo, and she got hit on the way up. It's going against Corisdale, her first. And Colorado in the bonus now. And again, they're going back to that matchup, Sam. They think, whether it's Balagoon or Corisdale, that Quay Miller has the advantage. And now Balagoon's coming back in for Duke. I assume she'll take over defensive duties on Quay Miller, but... Just great job of coaching by Colorado to go to the matchup they feel is working. Miller knocks down the first. She's got 10 points here in the first quarter. Hey, the NCAA championship final four weekend starts March 31st with the final four and continues Sunday, April 2nd. When we crown a champion, every game is on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Wayne Miller has outscored Duke by herself. So far, Sam, 11 points for Miller, nine for Duke. End of the 7-0 run there for Duke, and that one tipped out of bounds. Quay Miller had the hands in there. Look at head coach Carol Lawson there, her third season at Duke. Former WNBA Olympic champion, was named the sixth head coach in program history back in July of 2020 and has now guided Duke back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2018. A strong showing from Vanessa De Jesus here in the first quarter. Had the three. And got fouled there on the drive, the junior from Valencia, California. Good minutes so far from De Jesus. She's been aggressive, knocked down that three earlier, getting to the rim, putting pressure on that Colorado defense. De Jesus hits the first at a Sierra Canyon High School, a highly touted high school basketball program, of course. 
Leading scorer off the bench for the Blue Devils this year. It makes them both. Now Colorado's not waiting around back no, there to try and pass it. Colorado has not given Duke enough time to set up that first trap. Sherrod has just taken the ball and progressed forward. It's a, it's a very smart way to handle Duke's pressure. Miller and Sherrod working the little one-two. Sherrod shot clock down to five, kicks it out. Miller open in the corner, had it blocked. Balagoon got a hand out there. I believe that it was actually Ashlyn Jackson that stepped out of bounds for Duke, so Colorado basketball. Excellent contest. This just shows the length of Balagoon. Quay Miller caught that ball, and I'm pretty sure Balagoon still had a foot in the paint. That is an impressive recovery. Brianna McLeod lost the handle. And Duke ends up with it. Third turnover for the Buffaloes. Colorado did struggle turning the ball over in the first round against Middle Tennessee. De Jesus slips one back. Balagoon. Now Jackson for three. No good. Not the uh, strong point for Duke. Shoot at about 32% from beyond the arc, but they have still attempted a season setting program record high in threes. Jordan Oliver. He mentioned it, Kelly, just a couple layups that haven't gone in. That's three or four missed layups for Duke at this point. Trying to come back from a deficit for a team, as you mentioned, Sam, that doesn't shoot the three prolifically. You're going to need to make some of those open looks against Colorado. Just about 15 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Sherrod working on Oliver. Long two. Overshot it. Great and box out. By shot clock Dave violation Jesus. there. It was a great box out. The officials talking this over here. Yes, shot clock violation. That did not hit the rim. Bill Lawrence eventually made the call there. Marinette Von Ley returns back to the game. Clay Miller checks out. Colorado started this game six for nine. They have gone one for six since. Well, hold on here. Carol Lawson's getting an explanation here. It looks like it's going to be Colorado basketball. And Not the former sure will how. inbound There's it. currently zero on the shot clock. Sam, I got to be honest. I have no clue <laughs> how Colorado you. just got that basketball back. And they're going to have a last-second wow. chance here. That one was blocked. Weta got fouled. And Kendall Weta is going to go to the line to shoot two with 2.1 seconds left in the first quarter. Worst-case scenario for Duke to give up that kind of O-board and then just uh, you're just flinging it up there. I see the contact, but... You've got to know there's not much time left. She's just trying to draw a foul back up a little bit. I still, though, would love an explanation. Yeah. And I'm not sure we're getting it because we're way up here in the nest, which is a great view, by the way. But how did Colorado get that ball back? Try to get that question answered. Vikendo went up on the free throw line, 72% of the season. And makes the first. Colorado. Now to 20 points in the first quarter. Weta had six points, five boards, and six assists in the first round win over Middle Tennessee. The Jesus with a half court heave. Colorado with a 10 point lead after the first quarter here inside Cameron Indoor. Quay Miller led the way with 11 points, and Colorado trying to get to the Sweet 16. Duke. Trying to stop him from getting there. Oh my God, they're balling. I'm, I'm proud of uh, Rick came and gave me a, uh, a update. Uh, first of all, they got a heck of a coach.
and a heck of a coaching staff. You do know that, right? We all agree on that. But those girls are unbelievable, and uh, I love it. Great to hear from the new head football coach at Colorado, Deion Sanders, giving some praise. Daughter, of course, a member of this Buffalo's team, and giving J.R. Payne the credit that she so deserves. Seventh season at Colorado, making her third NCAA tournament appearance as a coach. Second, of course, at Colorado, helped Boise State to an NCAA tournament back in 07. But she's taken this program to new heights, Kelly. Her first year as the head coach, Colorado went 5-13 and 13 in Pac-12 play, and things actually got worse before they got better. Sometimes you got to tear it down to build it back up. I love Coach Prime giving a shout out to the women's program. His daughter, Shalomi Sanders, was a mid-year transfer. She's on the team. And I also love the cowboy hat look <laughs> from Coach Prime. Perhaps if Coach Payne in Colorado gets the win tonight, she'll throw on a cowboy hat. We'll have to see. Colorado's playing really well as we start the second quarter here. Duke just four for 13 from the floor here so far in this game. Colorado with a 10-point lead. Quay Miller, the leading scorer for the Buffaloes with 11 points. And Sam, we know that Colorado does not have the defensive numbers, as they call that an offensive foul, legal screen, I believe. Colorado does not have the defensive numbers that Duke does, giving up less than 51 points per game. But after watching Colorado practice over the past couple of days, and of course, seeing what they've done throughout the year, they take defense as seriously as Duke does. And I think you're seeing that in this game with how Colorado defends. Sometimes a little aggressive. Sherrod helps her up, I like that. But defense is a priority for Colorado, just like it is a priority for Duke. We talk a lot about Duke's defense, rightfully so. Only allowing 51 points per game. But uh, Colorado also only allows about 53 points per game on That'll defense. Work. And that's not that much of a difference. That'll get the job done right yep. here, as you can see. Take away from Sadler. She misses the layup. Duke has numbers now. Day Wilson leading the break. Celeste Taylor takes it all the way to the hole. Great decision and patience by Celeste Taylor. She attacked, hesitated for a second to see how things were going to open up in the lane, and then got right to the rim. Might be just the break that Duke needed. It's a four-point swing with the miss layup and then the made layup on the other end. Tayana Jones made a pair of threes last night. How about the hustle for the rebound? Last touch by Sherrod will be Duke basketball. And now Aaronette Von Ley and Quay Miller both check back into the game. Talk about the presence that those two have already had, the impact they've made on this game. Colorado gets more of an offensive punch from its front court than Duke does. And you're seeing that so far. Von Ley and Miller know how valuable they can be in this matchup, and they're doing that. Kennedy Brown, nice look underneath. Just a little too hot to handle for Balagoon. The seventh turnover for Duke. And Sam, we talked a lot about Frida Foreman, number three for Colorado, who hit five threes in their first game against Middle Tennessee. She was a point of emphasis in shoot around today for Duke. And she's 0 for 2. Duke's done a good job on her. Sadler hustling jump ball possession arrow to Colorado. And Colorado just one of their last 10 from the floor going back to the first quarter now. Two missed layups from the Buffs right there for Von Ley. And then previously for Sadler. Yes, they've got an eight point lead at this point. But this Duke team isn't going anywhere, and they, they need to make those layups. You mentioned Frida Foreman, who's going to take it out underneath here. 21 points, 6 for 10 from the field against Middle Tennessee, went 5 for 8 from three-point land. That's well defended by Celeste Taylor. Taylor, the bounce pass. Balagoon gets it back. Taylor comes up short, and Von Ley with the rebound, although she's hounded. And a jump ball. Possession to Duke. Celeste Taylor just makes plays. She read that play before it yeah. even started down here on the defensive end. Missed the jumper in transition, but didn't give up on the play. Got the jump ball, got the ball back for her team. Yeah, her teammate, Kennedy Brown, described her on the first day of press conferences here as relentless, using one word. Short on the three there, as Sherrod with a burst of speed. 
And Sherrod up with the left hand. Jalen Sherrod, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama. And Sam, I would describe Sherrod as fast. <laughs> yeah. She just beat everyone down the floor for an easy two. All Pac-12 honoree this year, five assists per game, led the Pac-12. Also led the conference in steals with over two per game. Taylor and Miller battling for the rebound, and Taylor takes it right back and gets fouled. Talk about relentless. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. I look down at Stat Broadcast for one second, <laughs> and I look up and she has a steal. How does she do that? She's just so pesky. She never, ever gives up on a play. And you have to know where she is at all times. You're always thinking about her as the opponent. Where is Agent Zero? Just does not take a play off. Balagoon, open for three, yes! Elizabeth Balagoon, second year transfer from Louisville. Duke's gonna have to make some threes tonight. I've already said it. That's their second, and that's a good sign as the Blue Devils try to crawl back into this game. 13 points in the first round win over Iona for Balagoon. Starting to get more hands and passing lanes for the Blue Devils. Once again, what's on the line here? Well, a trip to the Sweet 16. Colorado has not been in 20 years. Last time Duke was there was the last time they were in the tournament in 2018. And Celeste Taylor with another deflection. Taylor driving and an offensive foul. Sherrod was right there. That's going to be two on Celeste Taylor, by the way. And Sherrod still slow to get up there. This is a great play by Sherrod. Textbook on how to draw a charge. She was there, established her position before Celeste Taylor left the floor. And that's big, Sam. That's two on Celeste Taylor, Duke's do-it-all player on both ends. So Sherrod back to her feet. She will check out, although she wanted to stay in the game, holding her back there. That's also big, too, as one of the main ball handlers for Colorado goes to the bench. We'll keep an eye on Jalen Sherrod here. Both of these coaches have a lot of faith in their backup point guards. Kendall Weta for Colorado and Vanessa De Jesus, who played really well in that first quarter for Duke. 23-16, Colorado advantage with six and a half to play in the first half. Sadler blocked by Kennedy Brown. Day Wilson gets to the logo. Off the heel and out of bounds. It will be Colorado basketball. Duke, Duke has settled for too many mid-range shots in transition. They're not getting to the rim. You get that block. Great play by Kennedy Brown. Duke's off to the races. That's got to be the third or fourth time they pulled up for a mid-range in transition, a contested mid-range. Duke shooting it just 33% from the field here in the first half. Kendall Weta to the baseline. Back out, Sherrod for three. And that's off the mark. Both teams a little bit cold from long range here. And a foul against Jalen Sherrod. Her and Dave Wilson got tangled up in the backcourt. That's going to be two on Sherrod there. Sherrod got a little aggressive it's, going yeah. after. Day Wilson trying to deny her the basketball, but bodied her up. It's a good call by the official, and just a little puzzling why Sherrod went so hard on that play, and she picks up that second foul. Picks up a second foul, what, 70 feet from the basket. So two leaders for both teams with two fouls. Taylor on the bench for Duke with two, and Sherrod on the bench with two for Colorado. Here's an offensive rebound for the Blue Devils and a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Balagoon on the drive. What a finish from Elizabeth Balagoon. And there's the flip side of that Quay Miller Balagoon matchup. Balagoon has a little more speed. Quay Miller closed out and Balagoon beat her to the mid range. Scoring drought of two and a half minutes in the crowd coming alive here inside Cameron. Miller, the baseline drive, can't finish. Out of bounds off of Kennedy Brown and Duke. 
Kennedy Brown knows that she already has a foul. She got out of the way, really, of that play, trying to not pick up her second, and Duke was able to get away with it. Nice save there by Von Ley. Sadler is open and connects. Tamia Sadler has five points in the game, and that will extend the lead for Colorado. How about Von Ley keeping that play alive? That's going to be a push off on Day Wilson. Second foul on Shy Day Wilson. Duke hanging around, but Colorado. Still with a comfortable lead, 26 to 18 with a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line inside Cameron Indoor. How's the crow's nest? How y'all doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Kelly Gramlich, Sam Ravich on hand with you here inside Cameron Indoor. Colorado has pounded the ball down low in the paint. Vaughn Lay there. Look at the points in the paint, 16 to 8 now, Kelly, in favor of Colorado. The only thing hotter than Colorado right now is the air up here in the crow's <laughs> nest, okay? It's a little hot up in the crow's nest, but Colorado is just on fire. And shout out to Coach Vargas for keeping Monica and Kelsey in line. That is never easy, Sam. <laughs> Duke trying to get their offense going. You were saying it, Kelly. They're selling a little bit for some of those long mid-range jumpers. They just have not been falling here. And the size of Colorado, to me, has been a factor. You've got two bigs inside. It can be tough to attack. I think part of what's going on is Duke is pulling up and settling because they see Von Ley and Miller. Kendall Weta working on DeJesus. Misses the follow from Will. Miller is no good. One-on-one, -on -one, Richardson and Foreman here. And Richardson travels. I have just thought about it a little too much. Just some errors you don't normally see from Duke right now. That's 12 turnovers for the Blue Devils. We're not even at halftime right now. And they average just over 15 a game. Eight turnovers on the other side for Colorado. And they too average 15 a game. Hasn't exactly been light on the turnovers. They're coming from both sides, but Duke, just a couple more. 10-point lead for the Buffaloes. Under three and a half to play in the first half. Both teams playing for a trip to the Sweet 16 in a matchup with Iowa on Friday. The screen was set, but uh, it was DeJesus taking the charge. Second on Von Ley. Such a smart play by Vanessa De Jesus. Seeing Von Ley was slipping. She's in help side. She gives up her body. She's she's gonna get run over by a much bigger player, and she knows it. But that's who Vanessa De Jesus is. She's a team first player. She came in as a highly touted recruit. She's become a backup to Day Wilson, but that has not affected her attitude or how hard she plays. And she's been very important for Duke in this game. Certainly has made an impact, made a three. Some contact off the ball there. And I believe this is going against Colorado. Indeed, Brianna McLeod, her first. And McLeod had a really big impact in the first round game. She really impressed. Eight points. Played 20 minutes in that game. It was the most that she played since December 16th of this year. So Mia Heidi to the free throw line. And makes the first. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues with the Sweet 16. Coverage starts Thursday, 6.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Pacific on TBS, and later on CBS. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Sam, I'm not sure I've ever seen this strategy. The Colorado Band is holding up Tar Heel flags. Huh. During those free throws, they have two <laughs> Tar Heel flags, and they're holding them up and waving them when Duke shoots free throws. <laughs> Very interesting. Interesting strategy, Kelly. We'll see if it pays off. <laughs> Foreman, mid-range. Comes up short in the rebound to Jordan Oliver. Foreman is 0 for 4, and every shot has been short so far. Nice move from Oliver. 
had 10 points and four boards in the first round win over Iona, the junior transfer. Now down to a six point lead for Colorado, who was 0 for the last four from the field. Quay Miller, the long two, count it. Quay Miller's feeling it tonight. Her first points of the second quarter, she had 11 in the first quarter, but a much needed bucket for the Buffs. That's almost half of Colorado's points coming from Quay Miller, number 11 for Colorado. De Jesus off the screen. Oh, ho, ho. Vanessa De Jesus, seven points for the junior. She's keeping Duke in this game. Already over her season, season average of five points per game. Minute 40 to play here. Weta tries the scoop and it's swatted by Oliver. That's Duke's fourth block of the game. And Jordan Oliver reads that perfectly, stays in front, swats it out of bounds. Elizabeth Balagoon coming back into the game for the Blue Devils. Forrest Dale will head to the bench. 10 on the shot clock here for Colorado. Miller gets to the paint, puts it up and in. Quay Miller fighting through contact. Make it 15 now for Quay. Quay Miller is a tough matchup. And Duke just can't figure out how to guard her. Sam, she, guard, she scores on Balladoon. She scores on Forrest Dale. Again, Celeste Taylor has not returned since picking up those two fouls. Vanessa De Jesus has been able to take care of business. Comes up short on the three, and Kendall Weta reels it in. They're going to call an offensive foul on Kendall Weta there. Might have been sold a little bit, Kelly, but sometimes it's part of the deal. I do think it was sold. A good bit by Reagan Richardson. To me, that Weta extends the, yeah. she puts the elbow out, but she doesn't extend it. So that's a tough call. If she had extended the elbow, then that's a true push off. But I think she's just guarding the ball at that point. Here's a steal for Tayana Jones. Balagoon racing for it, and Balagoon has it. Under a minute to play. This is where Duke gets their energy. They're bringing it right now defensively, but they've got to be able to convert on the offensive end to cut into this lead. Reagan Richardson, another long jumper. This time it'll rattle home. Much needed. Now Duke needs to get a stop here before the end of the half. They cut it back to six points. Weta calling for a screen. Guarded closely by Oliver. Weta kicks it out. Sadler with five to shoot. Sadler's got to throw one up. Off the front of the rim. Oliver looking to push. Heidi. It comes up short on the layup. And that kind of told the story a little yes. bit there for the first half for Duke. Missed opportunities. Colorado with a six-point lead at the half. It is 32-26 with a chance to go to the Sweet 16 on the line. Let's send it back to the studio with Kelsey Riggs, Monica McNutt, and Nikki Fargus. Guys. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Colorado, the sixth seed with a 32-26 lead over the Duke Blue Devils at the half as we welcome you up in the Raptors once again alongside Kelly Gramlich, I'm Sam Ravage. KG, Colorado started on a 15-2 run. Since then, Duke kind of climbed their way back into it, but missed, had some early opportunities there as well. They just don't really have an, an answer for, for Colorado's front court right now. That's exactly right. Quay Miller has been excellent for the buff. She has 15 points and six rebounds. Duke has tried to guard her with a guard in Balladoon. They've tried to guard her with a post in Taya Corrisdale. And really, no one can guard Quay Miller right now. <laughs> the way she's shooting the three, extending the defense, attacking the rim, she has to continue to be aggressive in the second half for the Buffaloes. And 
It's been impressive to see what backup point yep. guard Vanessa De Jesus has done for Duke. She leads them in scoring right now. She's hit some big threes, which they really needed. And I love this charge she took on Von Ley, giving up her body against a much bigger player. Sam, it feels like Colorado played well in that first half. Duke really didn't, and they're only down six. So right. plenty of life left for Duke. But Colorado, I would say, keep playing through Quay Miller. And Celeste Taylor back on the floor here. Leading scorer for Duke and really a leader overall. Picked up two early fouls in that first half. Only had two points, so she's back. They missed her. To start this third quarter. Trying to go right down where it started in the first half. Kennedy Brown took it away and a quick foul on Von Ley. That's basically the play they ran to start the game. Right. And Brown wasn't able to get her hand on it. Von Ley had good position. That time Brown adjusts. You could see the emotion afterwards. And then Von Ley picks up a foul. So she's already heading to the bench, Sam. Three fouls for Aronette Von Ley. Kennedy Brown working on the post. Pull up Jay, no good. Rebound for McLeod. McLeod gave them some very good minutes against Middle Tennessee. She's going to be out there for most of this third quarter now with Von Ley in foul trouble. We'll see how productive she can be. Remember, Colorado hit 13 threes in their first round game against Middle Tennessee State. They've only hit two so far in this game. They're only taking five. Duke's done a good job of being aware of how hot they were in game one and running them off the three-point line. But overall, Colorado, they're making 13 threes is not necessarily their game. Dave Wilson fouled. Quay Miller can't believe it. Duke also needs a little more from Dave Wilson. That, that I don't was know. not she touched foul. Her. That was not a foul. I think Day Wilson was anticipating contact. Right. And when she didn't get it, she thought in her mind to, you know, fall a little bit more. And so she got the call. But you're right. There was no contact on that play. Coach Shara Payne trying to get a, a word in with the official there as Day Wilson misses the first. Day Wilson was the ACC Rookie of the Year last year. Her scoring has gone down this season. For Duke to get back in this game, they would love to see an offensive punch from the sophomore. Three points for Day Wilson now. Quay Miller. 15 points in the first half for number 11 for Colorado. Eight to shoot. Freya Foreman has not been able to get an open look. Gets one here and connects. Foot on the line. That'll be two for Freda Foreman. A rare mistake by Celeste Taylor getting caught on that screen, trying to go over the screen because Foreman is a shooter. And a great job by Foreman to pull up when she had enough space. Well defended by Sherrod there. Day Wilson couldn't break free. Balagoon's already hit one. That one off the mark for Elizabeth Balagoon. Sam, we always talk about games being physical in the paint. This game has been very physical on the perimeter. Yes. The ball pressure from these guards on both sides. You can see Celeste Taylor almost fell right there trying to guard Foreman. These guards, this has been a physical game outside of the painted area as well. It's got one of those feelings of being a close game. Yes. And nobody really able to break free outside of that 15 to two start that Colorado got on to start this game. Here's another turnover for the Buffaloes. Make it 13 on the game. Taylor, one on one. Wild shot there, gets her own rebound and fouled. And Celeste Taylor will go to the strike. She's disappointed in herself there that she missed the first one. That's kind of been the night for Duke. They've missed a lot of layups in transition. They've been able to get the ball back into the line. And they're five for six from the line, but there's a massive difference, Sam, in momentum, not just points, but momentum between getting to the line and getting a three-point play. So Celeste Taylor, again, 11 and a half points per game. She just dropped in her third. 
began her career at Texas, spent two seasons there with the Longhorns, and helped lead them to the Elite Eight back in 2021. Some full court pressure from Duke. We talk so much about De Jesus. I'm intrigued to see when Coach Lawson gets her in. She's had the hot hand offensively for Duke. Foreman calling for a screen, but she is hounded by Celeste Taylor, nearly turns it over. Sherrod, five to shoot, picks up the dribble. And a travel. 14 turnovers for Colorado. That was such a good defensive possession by Duke. They switched the screen. So Dane Wilson ended up on Quay Miller, a much smaller player. Quay Miller's calling for the ball, but Balagoon's ball pressure was so good up top that Colorado could not get the ball to Miller. Now the lead down to five. Kennedy Brown. Brown the step through, left hand no good. Great positioning by Balagoon, and she puts it right back up and in. Elizabeth Balogun with seven, and it is a one possession game here. Hard to believe that was just Duke's third offensive rebound. Generally, they are a lot better on the offensive glass, but what a play by Balogun. Colorado just two points so far here in the third quarter. Nearly taken away by Richardson. Sherrod, what a spin Ooh. move by Jalen Sherrod. That was tough. And then Sherrod goes right to pick up Day Wilson after she gets the bucket. Those two have been going out a little bit this after this evening. Sam. We talk about the physicality usually in front courts. It has really been the back courts yes. that have been physical and the guards here tonight. Sherrod crossover and got fouled. I don't know if something was said between Sherrod and Day Wilson, but Sherrod seems to want to go at Day Wilson every time Day Wilson is guarding her. And here's that previous play. Ooh. That is beautiful. That spin move got so much separation. And then even when the post player came over to contest, she was able to finish. And that is going to be the third foul on Shy Day Wilson. So she goes to the bench. And Sherrod off the heel there on the free throw. Her first attempts of the night. All Pac-12 selection. Averaged over two steals per game to lead the conference as well. 37-31. Vanessa DeJesus back into the game. We talked about her at the half. Might have pushed off there, sure did. And this is something as a player you've got to adjust, Sam. They've called quite a few push-offs in this game. Yeah. So you've got to realize this has been a point of emphasis for the officials. They're keeping an eye on it. And you've got to be even more careful when you're attacking the rim. And that time, De Jesus did extend the arm. That was different than when we were talking about that previous play where I believe it was Weta did not extend the arm. If you extend it, they're going to call it. Both teams with 14 turnovers. And again, both of these sides average about 15 a game. Sherrod had it poked away momentarily. Sherrod tries to find McLeod, eventually does three to shoot Foreman. Way short, Celeste Taylor on the break. Taylor gets it back. It'll be Richardson for three. Yes, Reagan Richardson hits the triple. And a three-point game once again, seven points for Reagan Richardson. Much needed. Duke is starting to find the bottom of the net on some of these clutch threes. And J.R. Payne does a good job of calling the timeout right before there was going to be a five-second call on the inbound. But Reagan Richardson, the transfer from Georgia right out of Charlotte, North Carolina, knocking it down. We have a ball game.
Get a look at the Seattle Regional Four here, the bottom left-hand side of your bracket for those following along at home. Duke and Colorado, one of the final kind of pods to punch their ticket to the Sweet 16, the chance to meet up with who? <laughs> Caitlin Clark <laughs> Ever at number two, <laughs> Iowa, on Friday. Sam, she is the best player to me in college basketball. I think she's the national player of the year. She's definitely the most electrifying. In their win over Georgia, she scored her assistant on 33 of Iowa's final 35 points. She is unbelievable. She's a game changer, a game breaker. And it's going to be interesting because whoever she plays, whether it's Colorado making their first Sweet 16 since 03 or Duke making their first in five years, you've got a defensive-minded team that has really good defenders capable of causing some problems for Caitlin Clark. Rod from the elbow, no good. Has not necessarily been the tournament for one seeds either. <laughs> Just seeing Indiana go down to Miami moments ago. Stanford has already gone down, and Duke here inside Cameron Indoor has cut it to one. Nice pass to Weta. Great response by Colorado. Duke was able to grab a little momentum. Colorado comes down and scores right away. Duke trying to rectify some of these upsets, right? right. That you've got Colorado trying for an upset bid here. We've had some crazy upsets so far in this tournament. As Sam mentioned, Miami just beat Indiana. Two one seeds have now lost for just the second time ever before the Sweet 16. Amazing. Colorado wants to keep the upsets going. Duke does not. Richardson has hit a pair in the last couple of minutes. We are tied up here inside Cameron Indoor. Reagan Richardson has hit some big shots here in this third quarter. Duke has not led in this game. Wide open for three in the corner. Sherrod, no good. Celeste Taylor. Across half court to Jesus. Thought about it for a moment. Here's Richardson again. Off the heel, gets her own rebound. Fresh 20. Good job by Duke to swing the ball to their shooter who's been hot in Richardson. Even though she didn't knock it down, that's just a smart, unselfish play. Kennedy Brown guarded by McLeod. Going to be taken out on the side here with four on the shot clock. Third foul on McLeod. Reagan Richardson tying up this ball game. It is 39 all. All right, how about a look at the freshly minted Greenville Regional 2 with Miami taking down the one seed Indiana, the second one seed to fall here so far in this tournament. They will play Villanova and Maddie Segrist on Friday. Success from the ACC in the Sweet 16. Virginia Tech, a one seed for the first time in program history. Notre Dame staying alive, still without Olivia Miles. Louisville playing well. And Miami, of course, we just saw. There's the ACC commissioner, Jim Phillips, who has, uh, well, he's been well-traveled, I think we could say, the last couple of weeks. The man's been busy. He has been everywhere at the ACC men's and women's tournaments, attends every game of both tournaments, which is just excellent. And probably on his phone, figuring out that Miami has done it. And now the ACC, if Duke can get this done, would send five teams to the Sweet 16. Taylor's jumper off to the left. Once again, Duke has never led this entire game. Jalen Sherrod opting to slow it down here. Would you say that a faster pace here favors one team or another? I think transition favors Duke just because that means they're forcing turnovers. They're a little more athletic and they're getting out in transition just like Celeste Taylor right here. And Colorado has been able to execute in the half court. I think right now though, Sam, 
They've missed the presence of Von Ley, and I like that J.R. Payne has put Von Ley back in the game with three fouls. Celeste Taylor, six points, six rebounds, six assists in this game. Despite the fact that she missed about half of the second quarter when she picked up her second foul. And the Duke Blue Devils, once again, now their first lead of the game. Sadler, difficult shot at the buzzer, no good. And a battle for the rebound. Taylor out again, one-on-one -on -one with Sherrod. Taylor, no good. Take it away. She and, oh. is relentless. We talk about how relentless she is. Her motor just does not stop. She does that once or twice a game where she sneaks up on someone and just picks their pocket. Finalist for National Defensive Player of the Year, Oliver fading away. Coach Lawson was telling us at practice yesterday that she really liked how Jordan Oliver had played off the bench, that J.O. had been giving them some good minutes, and that was a big shot from the transfer from Baylor. By the way, that was the seventh steal of the game for Celeste Taylor. Oh, my goodness. Six points, six rebounds, six assists, seven steals. Sam. Oh, boy. And she's been in foul trouble. Five seconds to go in the third quarter. Taylor. Taylor for three. No good, but Duke on a 17-7 run here in the third quarter. A 12-2 run over the last five minutes. And Duke is one quarter away from heading to the Sweet 16. Number three seed Duke now has the lead over the six seed Colorado Buffaloes, 43 to 39. The stacks through three quarters essentially pretty even. Aside, Duke has made two more threes, and Colorado has doubled the second chance points. But and it has been back and forth, and Celeste Taylor made a huge difference in that third quarter. Again, still two fouls, but my goodness. <laughs> Sam, she's been the difference, and she didn't play as much in the first half because of the two fouls, as you mentioned. This is absurd through three quarters. She does everything. She's the most important player on the floor. As Kara Lawson told us, there are very few players in the country that impact winning more than Celeste Taylor. Well, now it's the fourth quarter, Sam. It's winning time. What can both of these teams do in these final 10 minutes? Turnover's a big story in that third quarter. Duke had 10 points off of Colorado's turnovers in the third queue. Oliver cutting to the ball, leaves it short, and Jones with the board. How important is it going to be for Colorado to take care of the ball here in the fourth? Duke is at its best when it can force turnovers and get out in transition. You can't let Duke continue to feel comfortable offensively by giving up the basketball. But Colorado also has to execute on the offensive end. They've started to look a little timid offensively in the half court. They only had seven points in the third. Offensive rebound for Quay Miller. Tayana Jones lost the handle out of bounds. Duke basketball. Kelly, Colorado started this game, remember, on a 15-2 run. They started six for nine from the field. Since then, they are nine for 34. Some of that is Duke wearing you down. Colorado started hot, they looked confident, they were playing great, but the way Duke guards you for 40 minutes, it's very tough to sustain really good possessions offensively. Taylor, quarter three. Again, comes up short, but she saves it. Heidi has it taken away. Numbers for Colorado, but there's Celeste Taylor again, her eighth steal of the game. She's unbelievable. She is just unbelievable. You think she's out of the play, and she just appears, Sam. Oh, what a block by Jalen Sherrod. And another takeaway for Duke. That's Duke's 14th steal in this game. Wow. Duke Points averages, are hard to come by, Sam. They average about eight and a half a game this season. 14. And I think you're also seeing some tired legs out there as well because it has been just back and forth. 
on both sides. Taylor steps into one. Quay Miller with the rebound. Remember, we talked a lot about Quay Miller in the first half, had 15 points. Did not attempt a field goal in the third quarter. Balagoon did a much better job on Quay Miller in the third quarter. That's what was working in the first half, and they went right back to it, Von Leigh. And that's a rare mental mistake from Duke. Balagoon was just not in help side. They were able to lob the, top, lob the ball over the top to Von Leigh. And Sam, you're exactly right. You're seeing some fatigue. I think both these teams, with how hard they play defensively, they're having to expend so much energy. Second foul on Frida Foreman. And we've also talked a lot about this entire season the depth of Duke, and, and you imagine that plays a huge factor in a game like this. Duke has more depth than Colorado, but Duke isn't really playing. They're playing 10, but the rotation right now is at about eight, which is similar to what Colorado does. So it's grit time for both of these teams. Both teams are exhausted. Both teams have been giving it all defensively. Which teams can execute offensively in these final seven minutes? Sam? So the possession to Colorado there. And now the Buffaloes, a chance to tie or take the lead. Colorado has only hit two threes tonight, but there's the third. Frida Foreman gives Colorado the lead right back. It's 44-43. Frida's two buckets tonight have come when Duke has made the mistake of going under the screen. If you go under the screen against her, she will make you pay. Dave Wilson caught in midair. Kennedy Brown ends up with it. Nearly throws it away. Saved by Balagoon, but then turned over. Frida Foreman in the open floor. Now Weta slows it up for Colorado. No need to rush for Colorado. I like that decision. And Foreman almost turns it over. Now does and commits the foul. And Frida Foreman on the floor. Now held to her feet by her teammates. That's just the physicality of this game. Cool. This game has been brutal from a physicality standpoint. And I think maybe that left hand of Richardson hit Foreman in the eye or the nose, but nothing intentional there. That's all basketball play. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And here's why Celeste Taylor is the ACC Defensive Player of the Year and one of the four finalists for the National Defensive Player of the Year. In this place, she ends up out of bounds. She chases down Jalen Sherrod. Wow. The length of the floor gets the steal and takes the ball the other way. She has eight steals in this game tonight, tying Duke's NCAA tournament record. She is relentless. That's how her teammates yes. have described her. One of the best defensive players in the country, no doubt. Misses everything on the three there, but just to your point, Duke has 15 steals tonight. They have forced Colorado to turn it over 20 times. Jones. Too strong offensive rebound, though, from Von Ley. And the possession will go to Duke. Von Ley grabbing that rebound through two Duke defenders. That was impressive, but good job by Duke to tie it up. It just feels like at this point, Sam, every possession yeah. matters. All right, so we get down to the final five minutes here, five and a half, and a chance to go to a Sweet 16 on the line. And another turnover for Duke. Sherrod did a great job of getting out in the passing lane, taking that reversal away from Day Wilson, and then she didn't know what to do and kind of panicked. 18 turnovers for the Blue Devils. And yes, there have been some sloppy plays, but I think a lot of credit goes to both of these defenses. Knocked away by Kennedy Brown, five of the shot clock for Colorado. Frida Foreman to check back in. She's got three fouls. 
Colorado has three players with three fouls. Vaughn Lay, Sadler, McLeod. Make it four and free of Foreman. Vaughn Lay. No good. Quay Miller misses. Now follows and makes. Quay Miller leading all scorers with 17 points. Big time bucket. Staying with that shot for Quay Miller. You can see some fatigue, it feels like, with Duke. But this was a good job by Foreman. Kick it out to Von Lake. Quay Miller with Balagoon, the smaller guard on her, just continues to attack on the offensive glass. Three-point lead for Colorado. Four and a half to play. Sherrod. Yeah, I mean, it's been a physical game. Sherrod, remember, went out with that little back injury earlier on. This is what post players have to be careful. You high hedge, basically a two-step high hedge, and then you're trying to get back and recover, but if you stick your hip out a little bit, which Kennedy Brown did, they will call that, and Sherrod did a good job of selling that contact. Duke has yet to score here in the fourth quarter. This has been an issue for Duke all year. The scoring droughts have been a concern, and they're still guarding well. They've held Colorado to seven points in these first six minutes, but have not been able to get anything going offensively. Balagoon in the corner, count it! It's tied, 46-46. Needed that. If you are Duke and you're one of the Duke fans in this building, that was a massive shot from Elizabeth Balagoon. 12 points for Balagoon, and a ninth steal for Celeste Taylor tonight. Feeds it off to Jesus, gives Duke the lead. How about her ninth steal and her seventh assist? Sorry, eighth assist, Sam. Eight <laughs> assists. Six points, seven boards, nine steals, eight assists for Celeste Taylor. I think we are officially on quadruple double watch. Celeste Taylor so good at getting her hands on the basketball, gets the steal, she's off to the races. Great job of dishing it to Vanessa De Jesus, who again has been huge for Duke tonight with her nine points. Unbelievable. And Celeste Taylor, you can tell she's fatigued. You can tell that she has given every single thing that she has. Three and a half minutes left in this game. She also knows that Duke needs everything she has left. They're gonna need her for all three minutes and 28 seconds. The NCAA championship Final Four weekend starts March 31st with the Final Four and continues Sunday, April 2nd. When we crown a champion, every game is on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Down to the wire inside Cameron Indoor, Colorado and Duke. And a chance to go to the Sweet 16 on the line. The Blue Devils with a two-point lead. Kendall Weta, blocked by Kennedy Brown, four on the shot clock. Great play by Kennedy Brown to not foul, knowing she needs to help off, and definitely no foul on that play. Still going to be Colorado basketball, but it's down to three seconds. Still plenty of time on the shot clock to get a good look. Got to watch out for Frida Foreman here. Able to get it back to Sherrod. And it's stuffed by Reagan Richardson at the buzzer. Shot clock violation. How about six blocks for Duke and 16 steals? Those numbers are bonkers. What a play by Reagan Richardson. 
Duke makes defense fun. And I don't normally like defense, Sam, but I like watching Duke play defense. Balagoon fakes the pass, takes the three, in and out. That would have been huge. This that could have been a dagger for Duke. And the place would have erupted had that fallen. Instead, Colorado a chance to tie or take the lead. Under two and a half to go. Quay Miller with the ball. Foreman. Back to Miller, bobbled momentarily. Seven on the shot clock. Guarded by Kennedy Brown. Nowhere to go for Quay Miller. Another exceptional possession of defense by Kennedy Brown inside. Timeout called by head coach Carol Lawson and Duke with a two point lead and 2.01 to play. Man, is this fun! Kennedy Brown just active hand bobbles, but she enables Quay to bobble the ball a little bit. Straight up, being physical with her. We've talked about how Duke has struggled to guard Quay Miller at times. They've done a much better job in the second half, making some key adjustments. All right, so 2.01 to go. Duke has a two-point lead. Give me a couple keys for both sides here for the duration of this game. For Duke, when we start on this offensive side for the Blue Devils, you got to get some sort of points here. Put the pressure on Colorado. Go up four, go up five, whatever it is. Colorado has really struggled to score in this second half, only 14 points. It feels like the Buffs are feeling the pressure a little more than Duke right now, and Duke knows they can rely on that defense. But they've got to find a way to give themselves a little bit of a cushion right now offensively. I'd run something to get De Jesus an open look, considering she's been one of my better three-point shooters, or maybe Reagan Richardson. Celeste Taylor's been short on everything. She's really doing the defensive work right now. De Jesus weaving in and out, almost poked away by Weta. Four to shoot. Blocking foul called on Sherrod. Make it three on Jalen Sherrod now, and that's not exactly what Colorado wanted there late in the shot clock. I like the ball in De Jesus' hands. She has made good decisions all evening for Duke. And keep in mind, De Jesus, generally the backup point guard, out there right now instead of Day Wilson in crunch time. Taylor wide open to the lane. Celeste Taylor lays it in, eight points. Colorado just lost her. There's my analysis saying run the play where you get a wide open layup, because that's what Duke just did. A whistle off the ball there. That's going against Kennedy Brown on Duke. That'll just be the second team foul here. Will be the third on Brown. And again, what's at stake? Colorado has not made a Sweet 16 in 20 years. Duke made a Sweet 16 the last time they played in the NCAA tournament, which was in 2018. Nice drive by Sherrod to get it back within two. That is such a strong take by Jalen Sherrod, right to the rim, keeping Colorado in this game. Double team coming. A minute to play. Duke with a two-point lead, looking to add to it. Richardson, long two, no good. And the rebound to Foreman. Colorado does have two timeouts left, and they're going to take one here. J.R. Payne asks for time with her team down by two. 43 and a half seconds to go. Smart timeout by Coach Payne. These points are hard to come by in this game. We've talked about how every possession matters. You feel like you've got to score now, otherwise, Duke can go down on the other end and put this game away. I would love to see some sort of action for Quay Miller. Quay Miller has been able to be most effective offensively for the Buffs this evening. I do think Sherrod, but she just got to the rim right there one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see if Duke keeps De Jesus in, which I don't think they are. I'm looking down at the bench right now. I think they're taking her out for defensive purposes, trying to keep Sherrod away from the rim. So we'll see if Sherrod 
gets the nod here. Let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance, and who else? I mean, Celeste Taylor has just done it all for Duke tonight. She's been unbelievable. I don't know if I've ever seen a stat line like this, Sam. Eight points, eight rebounds, eight assists, nine steals Crazy. in 29 minutes. She was in foul trouble right. in the first half, didn't play as many minutes as she normally would. We are officially on quadruple double watch. We've been on that watch for most <laughs> of this fourth quarter. The effort and intensity she has brought to this game is just special. And it comes down to this. Who wants it more? A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. Colorado basketball. Kendall Weta will inbound. The Buffaloes down by two. Coach Lawson putting a bigger defender. Reagan Richardson has a little more size on Jalen Sherrod. Sherrod on the drive. Fakes. Gets fouled and the basket. Go to the hot hand. Go to Jalen Sherrod. She had just scored. And I thought it was interesting to put Reagan Richardson on her and not Celeste Taylor. Because Richardson got caught in that screen. And it was almost a wrap after she got caught in that screen. So Jalen Sherrod to the free throw line. She's one for two tonight. 71% free throw shooter on the season. Comes up short. Richardson out in the break. Slows it up for Duke. Loses it. But it's still Duke basketball. And a timeout for Duke and head coach Kara Lawson. Both teams down to their final timeouts here. 27.6 to go. Just about three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. What's Kara Lawson going to be drawn up here, KG? Well, first of all, I liked how Coach Lawson waited a second to see how that played out because you thought for a moment Richardson might have an open layup in transition, which is what you want. But here in this situation, Richardson is a player I would look to offensively. She has shot the ball well. And as I'm looking down at the huddle, I do believe De Jesus is back in the game. I like that. Actually, no, she's not. She is behind the bench. I think she's putting Shy Day Wilson back in who is known for her offense, has not shot the ball well today. I think Duke's going to run what they do. They're going to run a dribble handoff, some sort of screening action, and try to go towards the side of Celeste Taylor, who you still have to respect as a shooter. But I would get Reagan Richardson and Day Wilson involved. Kind of surprised Day Jesus is not in at this point with the way she's played today, Sam. Both teams with one foul to give. And a 50-50 to 50 score. Under 30 seconds to play. Balagoon has also shot it. Well. Yes, she has. I think you want to space out Balagoon and Richardson and let Day Wilson go to work with some sort of screening action and see if you can hit a shooter. You, you really just need points. Obviously, don't need a three. But I'd attack the rim. If that's cut off, try to kick it out for a shooter. How about defensively for Colorado here? You don't want to give up an open look to Balagoon or Reagan Richardson. But those are the two that worry me the most right now if I'm Colorado. Day Wilson, 15 on the shot clock, all tied at 50. She's got to watch that push off. They've been calling that. Day Wilson's got to go. Gets the screen, open for three. No good. Offensive rebound, Richardson fighting for it. What's the call? Jump ball. Possession to Colorado with 0.2 seconds left. Day Wilson, who's just one for five on the day and three points. Coach Lawson put the trust in her hands. She had the ball for virtually that whole possession. And we'll see how much time they put back on the clock here, Sam. Colorado's bench asking for a timeout. The officials are certainly going to look at the clock here. And so Colorado does officially call their final timeout. And this is big because, of course, in the women's game now, when you call that timeout, you can advance the ball. The real question is how much time are they going to put on the clock? 
because with three tenths of a second or less, you can only tap the ball. You can't catch and shoot. Ball was rattling around for a while before anyone really got a hold of it. You could argue they need to at least go to point three. I'm not sure how much more you can put on the clock, though, Sam. Colorado has the bigs to run a kind of play where you can just lob it up in the middle of the paint and try to get a tap. And the call on the floor was a jump ball. We are determining how much time will be on the clock right now. This game has been so evenly played, it would honestly be fitting for it to go to overtime. Okay, point three. They just switched it to point three again. Three tenths of a second or less. You can only tap the ball into the basket. You cannot catch it. You cannot catch and shoot. So it was at point three, now it's back to point two. Okay. You can still tap at point two, it's just a lot harder because you have <laughs> one tenth of a second left. It's gotta be something for Quay Miller, I think, in this situation. Again, Colorado is able to advance the ball on their final timeout. The Tayana. main thing for Duke here is you cannot foul. Right. You cannot foul. Tayana Jones will inbound. Here's the toss in, and we are going to overtime here inside Cameron Indoor. 50 to 50 at the end of regulation. We need more basketball to determine who is going to the Sweet 16. Stick around. So at the end of regulation, the score, 50, Colorado. 50, Duke, five minutes on the clock to determine who is going to go to the Sweet 16. Here's a look at the stats through four quarters. Both teams shooting 36% from the field. Both teams turned it over a lot. Second chance opportunities in favor of Colorado. The other thing that comes into play, obviously, with overtime is the foul trouble. Kennedy Brown has four for Duke. Nobody has four for Colorado, albeit four different players have three fouls. It's a great point, Sam. And we were talking about the fatigue setting in for both of these teams. Both teams look pretty gassed in that fourth quarter. You got five more minutes here for a trip to the Sweet 16. And the tip controlled by Kendall Weta. Here we go. Alongside Kelly Gramlich, I'm Sam Ravich. The clock has gone past 11 p.m. here on Monday night. What a bounce pass. Balagoon could not control it. 20th turnover for Duke. Colorado has 22 in the game. So much of that is because of how well both of these teams have defended. And the defense has been exceptional on both sides. It goes back to something I've said earlier. Which team can execute? Which team is going to be able to be just a little bit better offensively? Jalen Sherrod, another difficult drive, well defended by Balagoon. Duke back the other way. A little hezzy there from Shy Day Wilson. And she's going to the line. Coach Lawson has gone back to Shy Day Wilson. She's using her quickness to get to the rim. And that's now four fouls on Von Ley. Ernest Von Ley picks up her fourth. Day Wilson one for two at the line tonight, misses the first.
both teams seven for nine at the free throw line before that one fell in. Hey, Wilson with four points. Remember, she got the great look at the end of regulation. Just couldn't convert on the three. Duke with a one-point lead. Sherrod calling for Von Ley. Foreman off the screen. Continues. Fadeaway jumper is good for Frida Foreman. She's got seven. Tough shot by Frida Foreman. Duke has tried to make life very difficult for Foreman. They've done a good job, but she has still hit a few big shots in this second half. Balagoon had it tipped away. Last touched. By Elizabeth Balagoon, Colorado basketball. The level of difficulty on this shot to step back and fade away over six foot six, Kennedy Brown. Foreman is much more than just a three point shooter, Sam. She can do it all. Von Lay looking for help. Finally finds Weta. Three to shoot. Foreman, off balance shot. And Taylor ends up with the ball. Taylor, ooh, great transition defense from Colorado there to tip it out of bounds. Really good hustle by Quay Miller to run the floor and get back and prevent an easy layup for Duke. Balagoon will take it out underneath the basket. See those stats for Celeste Taylor. Eight points, ten boards, eight assists, nine steals. Balagoon doesn't get the friendly roll, and Quay Miller with the rebound. Now 13 rebounds for Quay Miller, 17 points, double-double for her. Nice find, Von Ley finishes, Colorado. Back up three. Celeste Taylor was there, she was in help side, but she ran through it. Instead of setting her feet, she was trying to get a quicker steal. Colorado makes her pay. Balagoon, a long three. No good, Von Ley with the rebound, tipped out by Taylor. Good job by Colorado, knowing Kennedy Brown was fronting Celeste Taylor. One of a, a very rare defensive mistake by Celeste Taylor. Not in help side, even though Von Ley still probably would have converted with her size. Under two minutes to play, Colorado with a three-point lead, trying to make their first Sweet 16 in 20 years. Sherrod gets the screen. Sherrod, strong take, offensive rebound. Von Ley puts it back up and in. How big has Aaronette Von Ley been for the Buffs? Day Wilson, a quick shot. Quay Miller with the rebound. And Sam Duke's taking two quick yes. shots there on those last two possessions. Feels like they could have gotten better looks than the ones they got. A 6-0 run for Colorado here. A minute 10 to play. Duke not fouling yet. Miller. Sherrod for three. No good. Dave Wilson looking to push. Wild shot there. There was some contact. Didn't get the call. And now a foul goes against Duke as Dave Wilson is slow to get to her feet. Feels like there was a little contact there, at least with Quay Miller. Almost inadvertent, but it did affect the shot from Shy Dave Wilson. So Duke commits the foul there. And we're shooting free throws. Here's what's at stake once again. Colorado looking for their first Sweet 16 appearance since 2003. The last time Duke was in the NCAA tournament, they made it to the Sweet 16 in 2018. 
Duke has one point in this overtime. We talked about both teams, how they bring it defensively. We weren't going to see a lot of points in this overtime period. But who could execute offensively? And Colorado has been able to do that. Sherrod, two for four at the free throw line tonight. Yeah, Kelly, to your point, Duke has just eight points since quarter three. Lost the handle, Balagoon gets it back, double team coming. And they're gonna give a foul on Jalen Sherrod. That's her fourth. Definitely some contact. Not where you want to foul. You already have her right. in dead man's corner at that point. There's no need to foul in that situation. And now Sherrod with her fourth. And that's going to put Duke on the free throw line as well. Right. I mean, you, you get a look at Sherrod. You get a look at Celeste Taylor. We have tired legs out there. No question about it. It has been back and forth all game long. And two players that have truly left it all out there in this game. You can tell how much each of these players, both wearing number zero, by the way, want to lead their team to a Sweet 16. Uh, uh, there's some confusion on Sherrod, whether she has four or five fouls. According to stat broadcast right now, she has four. Obviously something that the officials are going to want to make sure that they get correct here. And I saw Sherrod talking towards the officials and saying, I have four. Right. And as a player, Sam, you do know how many fouls you have. That's something you always are keeping track of in your head. Especially a player, a veteran like Sherrod. Under review is to determine if double zero from Colorado has five fouls or four fouls. There is some uncertainty. Okay, there you go. Some uncertainty as to the count of fouls on number zero for Colorado. According to the stats that we have in yes. front of us, stat broadcast, and the people working up here doing our stats, she has four. After review, it is determined that double zero has, in fact, four fouls and has not fouled out. So there you go, four fouls. Sherrod do it the whole time. She Sherrod was tried four. to I tell got four. <laughs> As a player, you may not know how many points you have, rebounds, assists, whatever, but you know how many fouls you have. This is interesting, too, because the officials took a long look at this, and Balagoon has waited a while on the free throw line. So now she will attempt her free throws and make the first. Didn't seem to affect her. 13 points for Elizabeth Balagoon. Had 13 in the first round win, now 14 points here tonight. And a late whistle there. After Foreman got rid of the basketball, so Frida Foreman is gonna go to the free throw line. Foul against Elizabeth Balagoon, that's just her second. And Frida Foreman is a 90% free throw shooter. That was a good job by Foreman too, to catch that ball. She got tripled in the corner, didn't panic passed it quickly to Quay Miller. Still got the foul call, but it's very key to not panic in that situation. Foreman makes them both. Clutch. Clutch free throws from Frida Foreman. And speaking of free throws, Duke has only scored from the free throw line in this overtime. Colorado 
trying to hold on to a six point lead and go to the Sweet 16 with 35.3 left in overtime. Welcome back inside Cameron Indoors. The clock strikes 11.16 p.m. We are in overtime. Number six, Colorado has a six point advantage over the three seed, Duke. Both teams with one timeout, no fouls to give. We are shooting the rest of the way. Alongside Kelly Gramlich, I'm Sam Ravich. What a pleasure it has been to have you all evening long. For those just joining us, it has been back and forth between these two teams. Back and forth in regulation. Overtime has been a different yep. story. Colorado has been so much better than Duke offensively in overtime. Duke has only scored from the free throw line. Colorado's gotten better shots. I think Sherrod has done a really good job of controlling and directing the Colorado offense in overtime. Duke's going to need a quick basket here. Celeste go. Taylor calling for it. Richardson for three. That's off the mark, out of bounds. Colorado basketball. And the time is winding down for Duke to make a comeback here. The key here for Colorado is inbounding Whoa. that ball. Dangerous pass. Day Wilson, top of the key. Three, halfway down, and it pops out. And a foul. Oh, Colorado got away with one there. Celeste Taylor made it happen. That's her 10th steal of the game, by the way. She now has a double-double, 11 rebounds and 10 steals. Crazy. You can't ask for a oh. much better look if you're Duke, and that's kind of how it's gone for Duke. This evening, they've had some missed layups, a couple missed threes that could have changed this game. Jalen Sherrod on the free throw line. Trying to ice this game for Colorado. And Sherrod makes them both. Sherrod has been so good. She's a senior just like Celeste Taylor. She knows what it would mean to this Colorado program to go to the Sweet 16 for the first time in 20 years. Colorado returned a lot of players from last year's NCAA tournament. And it was a common refrain, Kelly, this week that this was a business trip for Colorado after losing in the NCAA tournament last year to Creighton, who ended up in the Elite Eight. This year, Colorado is trying to upset the three C Duke and go to the Sweet 16 and have a meeting with Caitlin Clark and the two seed Iowa on Friday. Last year, Colorado was just excited to be there. They hadn't made the tournament in so long. Coach Payne told us this year, as you said, Sam, this was a business trip. They felt like they were underseated as a six. They felt like they could come here and win this pod. A lot of people had Middle Tennessee upsetting Colorado in the first round. Colorado beat them by 22. Almost everyone thought, well, surely Colorado can't beat Duke, the three seed at home in Cameron Indoor, thousands of miles away from the Rocky Mountains. But Colorado had other plans. Clock winding down here, long three for Day Wilson. Sherrod, nobody's coming to Fowler. Five seconds to go. And Colorado is going to the Sweet 16 for the first time in 20 years. What a moment for the Colorado Buffaloes, for Jalen Sherrod, who has spent four years here at Colorado. When she came to play, for Coach Payne in Boulder. There was absolutely no guarantee she was gonna to get to go to the NCAA tournament, much less make a Sweet 16. You can see how much this means to her. Sherrod left everything on this floor tonight, as did every member of 
this Colorado team. And you're seeing a mutual respect here, Kelly, between these two teams. This was a hard-fought battle between Duke and Colorado. Two teams that pride themselves on defense. I thought we saw some of the best defense of the tournament play in this game. Both teams knew each other inside and out after just one day of prep. Both teams played so well together on the defensive end. Both teams just brought it. And in the end, Colorado was able to execute down the stretch in overtime, make big shots, led by Jalen Sherrod. Congratulations are in order for head coach J.R. Payne giving hugs. Sherrod lifted high in the sky inside Cameron Indoor. Also need to give a ton of credit to this Duke team as well, Kelly. When you look at Celeste Taylor's final line, eight points, 10 rebounds, eight assists. I mean, it is, it is just insane. And then you count, of course, the steals at 10. I've never seen a line like that. Celeste Taylor, if this is her last year at Duke, we're not sure she does have a COVID year. Helped get Duke back on the right path and is no doubt the ACC Defensive Player of the Year and one of the best defensive players in the country. We're now joined by Jalen Sherrod. Jalen, congratulations on the win. We can clearly see the emotion on your face. What does this win, win mean for you? Um, it's a lot, man. This team's been through a lot. Um, everybody's just been through a lot. And it's just for one, it's a blessing um, because we've, we've worked so hard to get here and um, put Colorado back on the map. Um, show everybody who Colorado is and that Colorado is one of the best teams in the country. Jalen, you showed that tonight. You left it everything out there. It was a joy to watch you play. What does it mean? You committed to Coach Payne when there was no guarantee you were going to make the NCAA tournament. Now you've helped lead Colorado to your first Sweet 16 in 20 years. What was it about Coach Payne that made you want to come to Colorado? Um, honest to God, Colorado was my only Power 5 offer. <laughs> um, my senior year, I got hurt. I had a hip injury. Two years later, I ended up having season ended. Yeah, hip I had <laughs> I ended up having season-ending hip surgery, and so um, Coach Jay just never wavered. She always believed in me. Um, I was told I was too small. I was told that I didn't have the skills to play um, point guard at a power five level, and uh, she really just believed in me. She stayed with me through it all, so I think that, that, that loyalty is the reason I committed here, is the reason I stayed four years, and, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Well, your skills just got you to a Sweet 16. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your team, Jalen. Thank you. See the emotions on all of these Colorado players' faces, and rightfully so, as the six seed, Colorado, takes down the three seed, 61 to 53 in overtime. And Colorado advances to the Sweet 16 for the first time in 20 years. Once again, your final score inside Cameron Indoor, Colorado 61, Duke 53. For our entire crew this entire weekend in Durham, North Carolina, alongside Kelly Gramblick, I'm Sam Ravich. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great night, everybody.